So in this video we're going to just quickly go over again how to solve homogeneous second order differential equations and these this is based on our work for linear systems right because we can always convert a given second order equation via reduction of order to a first order linear system and we know how to solve those very well. All right, and the idea comes from substituting in to the second order equation that y is equal e to the st, all right? Because if we think about the, this equation, if, if it's first derivative and second derivative are going to be comparable to the expression, to the original function for some solution, then it's likely going to have to evolve an exponential. And then if we start taking derivatives, the first derivative via the chain rule, thinking about s as a, as a number we're going to figure out is s times e to the st, taking a second derivative, we bring down another factor of s, and we get s squared times e to the st, substituting that in these these and the original e to the st into the expression we have up above here, and I've called it h for homogeneous second order linear differential equation, leads to what we call the characteristic equation, which is the corresponding quadratic equation that we need to solve. All right, and for a quadratic equation where p and q are some coefficients for coming from the differential equation, we have three possibilities. You're going to get two distinct solutions, two distinct numbers, s1 and s2, that solve that uh, quadratic equation, and therefore our general solution takes the following shape here where it's a linear combination of exponentials. This also incorporates the case where one of these numbers could be zero. So if one of them is zero, say s1 is zero, then e to the s1 would be just e to the zero, which would be one. All right, so one of them could be a constant as well in this case. The other possibility is that you don't have real solutions to this quadratic equation. You have complex solutions. And we've seen via Euler's method, sorry, not Euler's method, but Euler's formula, that turns into a general solution, right, for thinking about the complex case for linear system, the components all contained um, either e to the at cosine of bt or e to the at sine of bt. And therefore, our general solution here is going to be a linear combination of those two functions. We're saying k1 and k2, right, are these, these arbitrary constants. So a linear combination of e to the at cosine of bt and e to the at sine of bt. Okay, and then... All right, one other thing to notice, right, if, if a is equal to zero, if you have a purely complex root, then you're going to have just cosines and sines there. The e to the at parts are going to go away, because it'll just be e to the zero, which is one, and you'll just have linear combinations of sines and cosines. If we have one root to our quadratic equation, then the general solution is going to be e to the st, and then also t times e to the st in a linear combination of those two solutions. Okay, and we need to be really good at solving these homogeneous second order linear constant coefficient differential equations for what we're going to go on to next, which is non-homogeneous solution or equations where we have a function on the right hand side, they're not zero. Alright, but the first step is always going to be to find the general solution to the corresponding homogeneous solution. So again, we've got three possibilities. We're going to have linear combinations of just exponentials. Uh, exponentials times trig functions if we have a complex solution. And then the last case is going to be the repeated root case where you're going to have e to the st and then t times e to the st. All right, and the last thing I want to mention here is that if we apply this idea to the simple harmonic oscillator, which we would get from the mass spring system we've talked about earlier in the semester, right, where we have a block sliding that's attached to a spring and that block is sliding on a table, okay, then the, the differential equation that models that motion where y of t is the displacement from the rest position is given below here by m y double prime plus b y prime plus k times y is equal zero. And if we apply this above analysis to that, then we would get the corresponding characteristic equation m s squared plus b s plus k is equal zero. Solving this via the quadratic formula, we would get our solutions here. And there's going to be three possibilities in this instance. Okay, and again, we're assuming b is a positive coefficient here to represent some friction being there. Then if there is some friction on the between the block and the table, then there's three possibilities. That number inside the square root, the discriminant there, b squared 
minus 4mk, either that is positive, negative, or zero. If it's positive, we see the harmonic oscillator is overdamped. All right, so the friction's uh, large in relative to the to the mass or to the uh, spring coefficient. We, in that case, we call it an overdamped harmonic oscillator. It's going to stop or slow down very quickly. If that number on the inside of there is negative, then we're going to get exponentials times cosines or sines. And in this case, we're going to get oscillation back and forth a little bit before it slows down. And we call that an underdamped harmonic oscillator. And then the last case is, is the in between, and we call that the, a critically damped harmonic oscillator. Okay. And now in our next video, we're going to look at the method of undetermined coefficients where we have some non-zero function on the right-hand side.